<laughs> Did I tell you last week? No. Did I keep the Yankee in suspense? No, she ran the roads off. <laughs> didn't come to practice, didn't come to church, but run the road. <laughs> Next week we'll be having testimony service. <laughs> Following that, we're having a repentance service. <laughs> Following that, one, we're going to have a healing service. <laughs> then after that, we're going to have a dead resurrection service. <laughs> no, we believe in resurrection. We don't believe in burial. We are supposed to be about the ministry of reconciliation. That's resurrection. <laughs> you look pretty trapped. Told her, mother. <laughs> if she can give you the looks that she's had me in my life, you'll say see <laughs> Oh, I think that's wonderful to have fun in church. There's a time for crying, there's a time for weeping, there's a time for rejoicing. And folks, I want to tell you what. If God's done for you in your life what he's done for me, it's time to rejoice. We may not feel like it. The Bible didn't ask how you felt. But I guarantee you, if you'll start rejoicing, your morning will turn to rejoicing. Before the sun rises. Get it? Morning? Sun rising? Uh -huh. Did the Yankee get it? No, she didn't. Yes, Good job. I'm proud of you. Talk your mama explained it to her. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Just put a target on my head. And apparently you got one on your back, too. <laughs> <laughs> Took an old fashioned East Texan to explain up northern Yankee. <laughs> We are not prejudiced around here at all. We're not racist at all, unless you're a Yankee. But I love y'all. You know it, June. We do. God just got through doing all kinds of miracles for the children of Israel. The enemy was who? Pharaoh. Of the children of Israel. They've been in bondage. Now, they, they've been in slavery. There's more to bondage when you talk about slavery. Bondage holds you to something. That's it. You're bound to it. But when you're in slavery, you have to work for it. Against your will. No pain. Fearing being beaten. Whipped to no end almost killed if you don't do what you're told by the master. Who is your master this morning? Are you mastered to the self? I do what I please. Player? First of all, you're not a player. You're a child of a king. You don't play nothing. You don't play with the devil. You don't play with his little dominions. You are a king's kid. You're right, K. Riss. Y'all need to quit sitting back to back. <laughs> Sometimes I forget the K and just say Chris. And then the one behind him looks up at me like, you talking to me? I'm older than that. I don't do stuff like that. I'm smart. I ain't got no girlfriend. I saw him with one the other day. He says it wasn't him. If Chris wanted his business publicized, he put it in the daily newspaper. I'm saying that it wasn't me. 
He put in the front page of Sheila Daly. <laughs> I'm kidding, Chris. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, I did. <laughs> Boy, I'm glad sometimes people can't see what's going on in the congregation. <laughs> 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 I redeem you, Chris. We are king's kids. Mm -hmm. We are spiritually the Israelites. We can almost say we're Hebrews because we have now, from the time of the cross, if you've been bathed in the blood, you are now heirs and co heirs with Christ. Amen. You know what? If you're not, I'll go preach in the streets. I will. I'll walk outside and start preaching. If we're not who we say we are, then why are we here? It's time to realize who we are. And the children of Israel knew who they were. He brought frogs. Where's Allie? My Allie. No, oh, she's not here today. She's a frog chasing food. Why, every time you turn around, they're chasing them frogs. I'm waiting till the day she's like, Grandpa brings a snake home in her pocket. <laughs> the day's coming. You'll be washing clothes, and something comes out of the washing machine that don't belong. It'll be a snake because they put it in her pocket. Right, mother? <laughs> Green ones, brown ones, black ones. I've had several snakes in my pockets. <laughs> I went to work one day talking to a guy who just happened to be black. And I had one stuck in my shirt pocket and we were working. And that thing poked its head up out of my pocket. He wasn't black anymore. <laughs> and he wasn't slow. <laughs> All I saw was a white streak running from me. I said, where are you going? Stay! I'm going, where? Oh, I saw that. I put it in my pocket. I forgot. <laughs> The other guy standing over there just dying laughing. I knew you could get you to put that in that pocket. I did. I sure did. You got that long. We got on purpose. The green. No, I really didn't forget on purpose. I knew he was afraid of him. He just pulled his little head up and just kind of looked around. Where are you going? Snake! He like a, I won't say it, but he was running quickly. Isn't it amazing that what afraid is scared fears us, puts fear in us, gets us hurt when it don't do a thing? The very thing that you're afraid of is only running its head, but you're tripping over yourself and it ain't doing nothing. The devil walks up to you and goes, boom. And you kill yourself trying to get away from him instead of rebuking him. We fear things that we're not afraid of. Well, I mean, that makes no sense at all for you Greenland, Greenville Knights. The Bible told us, fear not, for I have overcome the world. He also said, for I did not give you, Jude, the spirit of fear, but of love, joy, peace. Everybody know the fruits of the spirit? Why, heavens no. Why don't you? Because you are the fruit of the spirit. We cannot be what we don't know. When I was a kid, 
Schoolhouse Rock. And the thing that it, but it was good days. You people today don't know dirty from clean. Oh, that's good. No, that's insulting. That's not upbuilding. That's destructive. They taught us how to put sentences together. What's that joke in the At least I'm doing like you're laughing at somebody. Conjunction, <clears throat> what's your function? Who can I call? Make an injunction. Yeah, I learned it. That was something from years ago. <laughs> Then the little deal at the end of it went, schoolhouse rock! And right at the bottom it says, you are what you know. Mm-hmm. Only thing we know now is some stupid cowardly dog that's got a head of a dog on one end and on his butt end he's got a cat. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> It is not building the brain of our children. Whatever it is. It is not influencing, putting brain cells that actually work up there. Otherwise, we look like, I told him I wasn't going to pick on him. That was last week. Otherwise, we look like Charles Jr. Ray Charles Jr. There you go. That's Ray Charles Mom. That's Ray Charles Daddy. That's Ray Charles Jr. We get it figured out in a minute. I told him I was going to do acronyms. I can't remember that. I just, I, I, it's just easier to go, thank you. You know? But they stood and watched God move on Pharaoh because they knew what God had said to Moses. Who is Moses? I got a number on the truck y'all need if I go stick to it. I get Pentecostal every once in a while, Miss Bonnie. I get my own dinner, go see it, <laughs> stop it, and start. <coughs> After church, I turn back just real quick, sitting at, at the table. <laughs> I like to eat, as you can tell. <laughs> Moses was the pastor of the church and the congregation of the house of Israel, the children of Israel. They believed what he said. God was going to take us out. Not kill us, but out of the body. How many times have we heard the man of God stand in a pulpit and tell us God would get us out and we hoot and we holler and we walk out the doors going, I was stupid. Why was I listening to that? And God ain't going to do nothing. You're right. Because God don't dwell where he's not welcome. That's in the church. That's in your home. That's in your heart. That is anywhere. The man of God, and I'll be real honest with you, the thing that I like about pastoring the most is not listening to people's problems because i got mine. But when I start talking about mine, J.D., people don't want to hear them. They're ready to go home. They're ready to go eat. They come in the office and they want a dumping station. But then when you say, hey, I've got problems too. I need this and need this and need this. Oh, well, I've got two. And they're just like that guy that saw the snake in the pocket. Boom. People enjoy coming to church, but they don't take care of it, JD. People enjoy hearing the word, but they don't want to put forth an effort to read the Bible. Tough stuff, isn't it, this morning? We expect the preacher to lead us out. Right? 
Tell me what I need to do. Tell me I need to do this. Tell me this. Tell me that. Tell me this. Tell me. And we go right into God and we say, God, you put me in this. God goes, no, I didn't. You put yourself. Devil's over in the corner snickering. We turn and we look at him and go, what are you laughing at? He goes, I had no hands in this. You did it all by yourself. And we turn around and we want to blame the devil anyway. You can't do that. Because then it makes a liar. And this time I have to go because I forgot my clip. So God did all these miracles. He brought the frogs on Pharaoh. He even went all the way to the point of killing the firstborn. And Pharaoh finally said, okay, good Lord, somebody please turn them people loose. You ever been on a job interview where you just bug me, bug me, bug me, bug And the guy finally said, I don't care what you do with them, just hire them. Just put them on the payroll. Do something. Give them a job. No, we don't. Because our kids sit at home on computers. Right, Charles? They don't do face-to-face -face interviews anymore. Do you know that? You have to go through a computer and then right before you're hired, they want to put their eyes on you. You can't just walk into a place and say, can I fill out an application? Especially if it's a big company. Now, the mom and Pauls, you can still kind of get by with it, but there's fewer and fewer and fewer <laughs> of those. You want to know about it? My brother's looking for a job right now. He was telling me the process stinks because he said, if I can get face to face, I can get a job. But to everybody else, you're just a sheet of paper. But folks, let me tell you something to God. But to God, come on, folks. But to God, He knows every hair on your head. He knows every tooth in your mouth, every cell, every stray mustache hair that tickles the nose. And... All that good stuff. Every hair on your head has a number. Some three, some three hundred, some three billion. Miss <laughs> head full over here. But me and CJ over there, you know, ours is definitely numbered. Got more on his chin than both of us do on our heads. <laughs> That's funny, you know it. Yeah. <laughs> God just got through delivering. And finally, Pharaoh said, get out, get out, get out, leave me alone. Let's pick up in verse 1 of chapter 14. Exodus, Exodus, whatever you want to call it. Chapter 14. Y'all hear that noise going on over in that room? It is sweet. It's beautiful, isn't it? Because you dead butts are going to die one day. Somebody might have to step up and take my place. No, that means you too. We're all the kids of the church of the future is what I'm saying. We was at that casting crowns and he said, Father, forgive us for we're all just a bunch of dorks down here. <laughs> I don't like to a hell out. Exodus chapter 14, verse 1. And the thing that I like right off the bat, it said, and the Lord said. Now the verse says, and the Lord spoke unto Moses. Moses, what is it with me in the A's today? Say. Now, the Lord spoke to who first? The head. There's a chain of command according to what God does and how he does it. So God said unto Moses, Speak unto the children of Israel 
that they turn and count, and I ain't even going to try to pronounce these names. Well, let's say they're going to count between uh, Pittsburgh and Mount Pleasant and the sea over against uh, Boston before it shall be in count by the sea. So here we are. We're on a journey. We're going from one place to another. And it's about a three or four day journey. And all of a sudden, we've run out of landscape. No more real estate. We go on a body of water. What are we going to do? You ever thought that God leads you out to something and all of a sudden there's nowhere else to go? There you are, standing at a crossroad. What do you do? What did he say? He said, in count. Pitch your tents. Relax. Kick up your feet. That's not what he said. But what he said was, pitch your tents. Set up camp. If you set your feet up and don't do nothing, you can't set up your tents. I got some video. Me and Rob was looking at it last night. Of our camping trip back in April. Beautiful day. Beautiful morning. Huh, it's just after lunch. Let's see if we can put another hook in the water or two. And in 10 seconds, the temperature dropped 20 degrees. It wasn't calm anymore. One more, me. It becomes the monsoon. We drove a hundred yards across the peninsula between the two lakes, from one lake to the other, and our tent when we got there was laid on the side. Now, if you think you're going to sit back and kick your feet up in a storm like that, you have lost your mind. I bailed out of the truck, jailed, and even shut the door. I look up, Robbie's going. Because as soon as we got out of the truck, the canoe is flying over the truck. I looked at Rob and I said, Thought I was in New York, girl. Get her off! Some of you know the story of the, the TV commercials, not a story, but they're talking about paste piccani sauce. Made in New York City, get a rope. Oh, hang them Yankees for making Texas Southern stuff. <laughs> we tie the canoe down. Are we ready? No, we weren't ready. We knew it was coming, but it didn't come when I close your mouth to catch it. <laughs> we had missed it. It was supposed to have been there 12 hours earlier, but it never showed up. I think we said I don't make it come. <laughs> we have the thing that we're running from behind us and we have nowhere to go in front because the storm is behind us and the river's in front of it there we sit on a little peninsula of uh, Lake Monticello no blockage, no nothing. The wind coming straight off of that lake out of the north, blowing 60, 70 miles an hour. And I think some of the gusts even got up to 80. It had to got up pretty good, little Charles, to move that 19 foot canoe 100 yards, 50 yards, whatever it was. It had to have some pretty good gusts. Zach called it. Anybody seen the ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam, ba -bam, ba bam You can hear that aluminum rolling across the drain. Fear strikes. But God said he had not given us the spirit of fear. I gotta hurry. I was supposed to get to 12 today. We're gonna finish next week. Yeah, I got 10 to 12, and I'm supposed to get to verse 12. But God said. Verse 3, for Pharaoh will say to the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them up. 
the wilderness, the unknown, the things that we could be hiding out of every corner. You ever seen people walking through the house going, Oh, that's my wife. <laughs> she walks in the house sometimes. She's looking. I'll go. Ah! <laughs> She's not so bad anymore because she knows I won't do it. She used to be jumpy until she got around me. I broke that. Huh. The wilderness holds the things that are that can hide. It says the thieves hide in the night. They hide behind the trees to shed innocent blood. The wilderness has shut them up. And then what did God say to Moses in verse 4? And I, being God, will harden Pharaoh's heart. A lot of times we get upset because people get mad at us. It's not them. You ever thought that maybe God has hardened their heart towards you for a reason? Who knows? If Pharaoh might have been nice, the children of Israel might have gone back to their bondage because we love our comfort zone. We don't care how hard it is. We want comfort. We want routine. Do not change. I drive this way for 40 years. Don't tell me there's construction and I got to go around. Shut up and go around. I may be the one standing out in the middle of the street working. But if you're in Garland anyway. God may have you the tear for a reason. If God can harden Pharaoh's heart, maybe because you won't listen, God uses somebody else to get your redirection. I like your shirt. Beautiful shirt. Wonderful. Great minds think alike. Then why don't we think like God all the time? <laughs> oh. 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 You say, well, I'm not going back to this church because the preacher did such and such to me. Maybe God said. Oh, me. Oh, me. Oh, my. Can't say amen, say on me on mine. He said, and he shall follow after them. He will pursue them. The very thing, cigarettes, addictions, pornography, it don't matter what, relationships. Anybody ever been bound up in a relationship? Mm, not me. Brother, you hush. <laughs> I wasn't even married. It was a meeting from hell is what it was. Because there was no God in it whatsoever. But because we feel, we pursue. Folks, love's not a feeling. Now, yes, you will feel it. I just don't feel like I don't love you no more. You never loved them to begin with. That's what the word said. Isn't it? We make covenants. We make covenants with God. God, if you will get me out of this. That's what the children of Israel are fixing to say. Moses, you drug us in this. God, get us out. God goes, ha, ha, ha. I didn't put you in it. As parents with our kids, my mother's done this. Rob was telling me his mom did too a few times. Where, mm hmm, I see you. You got the knife and you're going towards the outlet. You're fixing to stick the knife in the outlet. Oh, yeah! <laughs> then she, guardians didn't say a word until it was over. Got off my bicycle. Dad said, I told you to put your foot down before you stopped. <laughs> well, guess what? <laughs> One day he pulled up at the stop side stop and fell over with mother on the motorcycle. She turned around and looked at him and said, Bill, you gotta put your feet down. <laughs> what goes around comes around, don't it? Electricity pops us and then 
Whoever's sitting back, like, mm -hmm, I knew that was going to happen. Then why didn't you tell me? You won't do that again, though, will you? Hurt, didn't it? Yeah, but you won't do it again. Because some of us are hard headed. I won't mention any names like Rob. But some of us are so hard headed, we have to experience it, feel it, and feel the pain before we won't do it again. God can sit there and tell us all day long, he or she is not the one for you. This is just a stopping ground. Let's see how you do. I didn't do so well, J.D. I like to kill her myself before it was over. <laughs> because it's not my style. If I'd have had a gun, I probably would have. Cooped up 12 hours with a drunk. Yeah, not my style. At all. Oh, but so-and-so said this and so-and-so said. It don't matter what so-and-so said. Those so-and-sos are not paying your bills. Those so-and-sos are not taking care of your spiritual outcome of your life. Those so-and-sos didn't save you. Those so-and-sos didn't redeem you. Come on, I'm preaching good this morning. I am preaching good this morning. Those so-and-sos, all they're going to do is suck you dry. Well, that's what the Egyptians had done to the children of Israel. God finally said, okay, I've had enough. Now let's get up and get out of here. So, what did the Egyptians say? i got to look at my notes. I'm trying to stay on the notes, but it's not working. And I'm trying to stay on the time clock. I'm going back to my watch because it's 10 minutes slower than the rest of it. That gives me 20 minutes, right? 15 minutes. Yes, two minutes in. Yes, yes, yes. God said that he would harden their hearts. Sometimes to get out of a relationship, God's got to harden some hearts. We hate hardened hearts. Why can't everybody just be nice to me? Because you're not nice to everybody else. Sometimes we get caught up in things like this morning. I told them, I said, guys, I'm sorry. I'm struggling. You don't like it? Tough. I ain't nothing I can do about it. I'm trying. I'm trying. And Pharaoh's heart was hard and he chased them. Verse 5. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh, 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 whatever his name is. Until I'm hungry, I said, Ebro. And of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Folks, you've been serving the devil. You've been a good servant. You're serving someone who doesn't believe in God. You've been good to them because they haven't had to do nothing. You've done it all for them. Turn them loose. Let it go. Let it go. Because all they're going to do, k -Riss, is drag you down. We get tied up in relationships because we think there's nobody else going to gonna, gonna be with us. That's a lie of the enemy. God said every man and every woman, there's an opposite sex for them. How do you like the way I worded that? God is not the God of homosexuality. God said I designed marriage to be a man and a woman and bring forth fruit. That's biblical. You say, well, you're being judgmental. Call it what you want. It's godly. It's righteous. I'm trying to hurry. And so, so Pharaoh got all of his chariots and everything together. And uh, they said that it was, i got to look it up because I wrote it down. I want to say it was. All right. Josephus says that Pharaoh had 50,000 horsemen and 200,000 footmen. That's a lot of overkill to chase just a few Israelites. 
But I got news for you. Israel wasn't that small. <laughs> there was over a million Israelites. You say, well, now wait a minute. All right. Pharaoh had 600 chosen chariots. And then he had 50,000 horsemen plus 200,000 footmen. That's only 200 and 56, uh, 200, 250,600 manpower, horsemen, whatever you want to call it. Now, the children of Israel was over a million. We get comfortable where we are because if a million people can't take over 200,000, we're in trouble. Sir? Well, they don't have weapons. Well, they were mining. They were building bricks. We could have found them. They could have. We don't know. We wasn't living there. But you're absolutely right. But I got news for you. Weapon or not, somebody breaks in my house, I'm taking you out. Because that's my children. That's my grandchildren. That's my wife. Well, I'd probably let you take kids before I let you take a wife. Let me just be honest. Here, you can have them. I'd make more of them. Yeah, you can. You're right. Boy, if I had no grandkids so much fun, I'd have had them first and left kids alone. <laughs> But then the Lord said, Harden Pharaoh's hearts to the king of Israel. And he pursued, verse 9, and the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea. So he had enough horsemen to surround them. Thank goodness for the sea, huh? Thank goodness for the sea. You know what? Our blessing is right in front of us sometimes and we don't even know it. Everybody say, thank God for the sea. And in verse 10, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Huh? Hello? They couldn't do nothing. We're just marching and all of a sudden when their back's against the wall. Got to make a decision. I'm a Star Wars, Star Wars guy from way back. They're in the trash pit and here comes the wall squeezing in. What you going to do? You're going to start, you're going to find some weapons or something. Start blocking the walls, holding them up, trying to buy some time. You're going to do some things. Well, there they are. Got the waters in front. And this wall is pushing in on them. All of a sudden, Bonnie, their real estate's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Kind of reminds me of a polar bear on an ice cube. Anybody ever tried to ride an ice cube? But you can get on an iceberg. You can't make an iceberg out of an ice cube. But you can make an ice cube out of an iceberg. That'll hit some of you later. And Moses said, because there were no graves in Egypt. Excuse me. The children of Israel are complaining to Moses. And the children of Israel said, Moses, because there was no graves in Egypt, why hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? It's what some of us sound like. Every time something don't go our way, first thing we start getting <laughs> We sound like three-year-olds who don't get their way. And some of us are 90 years old almost. JD. The first time we thank God is not doing what he told us he would do. 
Well, God, why did you put me in this church with this loudmouth preacher who spits on the first three rows? <laughs> yes, I <just> did. <laughs> Why do I have to drive 30 minutes to go to church? You know what? Some of us won't even drive across the street. She's driving 30 minutes and she ain't complaining. She's usually the last one here, but she's also the last one to leave to make up for it. While the rest of the folks, Sister Bonnie, comes in late, they leave early to make up for it. We start whining. We start complaining. God, why did you make you mad at me? Why is she not hating on me? Why are everybody, why, 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 why? We're going to change your name to Charlie Brown. Why is everybody always picking on me? <laughs> because Satan desires you. He wants to stop you. He doesn't want you growing and maturing in the things of God. Finish in verse 11. Wherefore hast thou dealt the, this with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt? In other words, we told you this was going to happen. Every time we get in a church deal and something goes wrong or a little happens, the first thing the owners want to say is we told you it was coming. We told you that was going to happen. And then the kids just go, well, we didn't want to do it in the first place. First time you try to change directions with a train, all hell breaks loose in places that you don't even think it would in your family, in your relationships with your kids. You know, I, I went to a funeral yesterday and I left almost crushed. I heard the kids talking about how their dad had done. And the enemy jumped up on my shoulder and he said, yeah, see what he's done? You didn't do anything. For your kids. You didn't take them to ball games. You didn't see this. You didn't see that. You didn't do this with your kids. You didn't do that. And I know my wife got mad at me, but I took all I could take, Kate. Finally, I turned to her and said, I, I, I got to go. I think I'm going to And I felt about that time. Because I've already feel like I failed as a father in some areas. Enemy will come in in places where you're not even expecting it. First thing we had to do is start rebuking. Because, Bonnie, our past is our past. And we all got it. Don't look at me, old brother more worthier than I, because you ain't. We all have done some things, JL, that we don't want to talk about. We've all done things that if we began to talk about them, people would be pointing fingers. Don't shake your head too hard. <laughs> We're not going there. I hear you. What's the old score thing? One cancels another? Yeah, I don't see nothing, baby. I don't mind talking about some of my stuff. I'll tell you straight out. Because look where I come from. I don't use it as a, as a whipping post like they did for Jesus. I look, I look at it like, you see what I used to be. It wasn't easy, but you see who I am now. You see how you used to be, but look at yourself now and see how far I've come. Ain't got nothing to do with me. I didn't do any of it. 
God's done it all. But I had to allow him to. I got chill bumps all over me. I got chill bumps, Jay, other places. It's going to take five minutes to find me. God has carried me from being a wretched, smoking, drinking, all not running food to going to bed at 8 o'clock at night, hitting the floor at 4.35 o'clock, turning on Christian radio, listening to the preaching that's feeding inside of me. Some things you got to throw out that, you know, some of mama's, like you do mama's cooking sometimes. She loves it. it, it I'm sorry. Sister Bonnie, I don't care how hard I try. I can't stand the tomatoes. I'll put them dudes on a fork. <laughs> I just I just can't eat them. I just, I just don't like them. I don't like the acidy taste to them. I just, they put out some ketchup when they're cooked. I'm okay with that. Tomato sauce, I'm okay with that. I just can't eat too much of it anymore. There are things that we just don't like. We got to pitch it out and keep the things that root us in the Word of God. Sometimes it's things we don't like that God uses to move us. I'm going to try to get to where am I going to try to get to? Well, I want I want to stop at verse 14. My clock says I've, I've already gone over the extra five minutes that I took. Verse 13, or 12, sorry. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. The first thing we do because we have changed our style of living is we start saying, well, this is going to kill us. Come on, somebody. Come on, that's good. I have heard him say, this is either going to kill me or cure me. Why did I change jobs? This thing is going to kill me before it's over with. We, want, we had rather stay stuck to cigarettes, alcohol, relationships, pornography, or just flat serving our own will than we had to surrender and let God be God. I bet you if I was in Jensen Franklin's church, honey, he would have said, take a praise break right there. But Moses, knowing what he had heard, and Moses said unto the people, fear not, stand still. People get to stirring, and all of a sudden, just like this morning, I just kind of sit back and watch God do what he was doing. People were stirring and moving, and all of a sudden, chaos took over the house. Took, I mean, it was so bad it got on the platform. And I just looked at Ruby, and I said, chaos is in the house. And she went, she turned around and said the exact same thing again like I didn't hear her the first time. And I turned around and said the exact same thing that I told her like she didn't hear me the first time. Chaos is in the house. When chaos hits, Lester, sometimes we just got to stand still. We just got to stand still and let God be God. For he is God and we are not. Sometimes it's hard to stand still because the first thing a mama wants to do, I see that big old grin, and uh -huh, is go bail her baby out. Leave him alone and let God. I figured my mother jumped too huge by that time. Now I want to point out three quick things. I'm not even going to get to 14. You can read 14 and, and, and uh, 13. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show unto you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more. Now what part of that do you not understand? The problems and things that you see at your crossroads today that are coming to push you off the cliff, you will not see anymore. Come on, folks. 
You have not because you act not. Asking is an action. We believe not because we've heard not. Now I want to point out several, a couple of notes right here, three points. They were at the end of their journey unless they could get through the Red Sea. Some of us feel like we're at the end of the journey unless we can just push our way through that. You can't push your way through a sea. Unless you've got a big brother like I do who's younger than me and can build a boat. Go buy a boat. Trust me. We stress the limits of that little boat. But he carried me fishing. He gets in the boat. It's out of the water. I get in the boat. It's out of the water. If somebody spit, the fish would be in the boat. Spiritually speaking, we cannot cross the Red Sea. We're at a place. Sometimes decisions are coming from us in every direction, and you can't see the fire for the smoke. Put your cigarette out. You'll see it. Hello. This is what God had in mind all along, but had not revealed it to the leader. Sometimes God just wants to see if we will. So what we call today, lean. I remember that old song, lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll pay your bills for you. What? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that ain't how that song goes. But that's what a friend does. A friend will go out in the middle of the night when you're stuck and pull you out or pick you up. And then chew you out all the way home because you got him out of bed because you didn't got no business out in the mud that time of night in the first place. Right, brother? <laughs> and sometimes they chew us out by not saying a word. God had a plan all along. Now listen to this. If Israel had been forsook, then the promises and the covenants made with Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac would have failed, and God would have been blamed by all free moral agents for Think about that. If Israel had been forsaken, then the promises that God had made to Abraham and Jacob and Isaac, then God would have been blamed by all free moral agents in the universe. Because God makes a promise, it's a done deal. Sam Pitts preached the message one time. It's a done deal. No matter what you see, no matter what you hear, no matter what you feel, it's a done deal because God said it. And I carried it one step forward after the service with me. And he thought I was crazy, but he come back later and he said, you know, you have a point. God said it. That settles it. It don't matter if you believe it or not. We can believe God can do this, but we cannot believe that he'll do that, but he's done it anyway. Think about it. I'm going to even push the envelope one more time. We believe God put the stars in the heaven and everything into motion, but we cannot believe God can save us. We cannot believe that God will heal us or deliver us, but he's the God of I am. Every promise he had ever made in this book, he told Abraham, out of thy seed I will heal nations. Jacob is climbing the ladder. 
But God proved himself just and merciful. Come on. Come on, folks. Come on. Look at your life. God has proven it. And he has proven one who works everything out for the best of all concerned. Are you listening to the preacher this morning? Even though God was criticized and misunderstood for the moment. Hmm. Folks, God is not man. We judge God according to what we do. Well, the man of God told me this. Don't listen to the man of God. Listen to the God in the man. Not the man of God. Because he will fail you. There's only one who was sinless. And his name was Jesus. And if the man of God tells you anything but that. He's a liar. The Bible calls them false prophets. Because I'm telling you. No one goes unto the father. Except through Christ. I don't care what man has said. Come, send me money. Give me this. Give me that. You get this. You get that. That is not biblical. Plan a thou. I heard a preacher yesterday morning, Rob Ingram. I just got out of the shower and I turned around and didn't even realize my phone was going off. Rob was in the yard and I didn't know it. There was a preacher saying, if you'll send me a thousand dollar seed, God's going to do this for you. God's going to do that for you. Then that insult to injury, injury came risk. He said, I don't care where you get it. You might have it stuck in an account to pay off some of your house. You might have it stuck in an account to get a car, to get medical, to get something. Go get it and sell it. And I thought, you fool. You don't do God's people like that. Now who's the favorite? What's got you back against the wall? See, preachers will lie to you. <coughs> and Sister Bonnie, sometimes it's worth the drive to hear the truth. Will I lie to you? Don't ask my wife. <laughs> At every chance I get. You will too. We're not going to get our butt, butt in the pickle. I will do my best to tell you the truth, but sometimes we make mistakes. And sometimes we make mistakes when we're running out. I made a big mistake here not too long ago because I forgot the scripture. God put in the heart of the king to search out a man. Think about that. You have something that comes up, it's in your heart to search out the man. Be swift to hear, not to speak. You don't have to answer man every time. There's a question. One more point. God had no intention of leaving them to die in the wilderness. But to man who can see only circumstances. Our attitude needs to be, and I just totally lost what the scripture is, but I, we walk by faith and not by sight. Sister, sometimes all we got to do is just close our eyes and find out what God's been saying. Because Satan wants the world to demonstrate the opposite of what God said. And there we are. But God, you said, you said. And we're sitting there down the whole time. 
God, you said, but this is before me. God said, get your eyes off of that. But God, I can't. This thing is over here rattling in my ear. God says, I'm trying to, but you won't listen. God said, listen to me. But God, don't you see the forest? <clears throat> and his name ain't God. A lot of times, folks, we can't see the forest from trees. But God is just on the other side of the road. Saying, come on, keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. And you know, who knows? You may walk out on the pier one day and all of a sudden a boat pulls in, runs aground. And then this tall, lanky guy comes running up to you and goes, Ah, hello. Won't go flipping. I said it with a little humor, but what God, what you think is a disaster, God just made you know. Hello? Hello? Well, I got through two pages of it anyway. Didn't get through all three. I have a question for you this morning. Where are you at your crossroads? My title this morning even says, but, but what about my crossroads? What about it? The only crossroad you need this morning is, do I know Jesus or not? I'm not saying your life's going to be perfect. I'm not saying your life is going to be without a problem. When you surrender to God and you're living for Christ, I said the two words backwards, but you get the point. They're all in the same. You're probably going to have hell unleashed on you. But remember, greater is he that is now in you than he that's in the world. Because he that now lives inside of you has overcome the world. Folks, I'm going to stand here. There is no decision in this life. There is no situation in this life that can take from you if you don't let it. Because as a king's kid, you have every benefit that is listed in that book. Charles Jr., the reason we don't go after those benefits and those promises is because we don't know they're there. There is salvation. There is deliverance. There is sound mind in this Bible. You say, well, I don't know if I'm hearing the voice of God or not. Well, here's your problem. Pick it up. You'll hear it because you'll start reading it. And then when you hear a voice that tells you don't do something, if it contradicts this word, it is not God. Come on, you military people that are in here. You know the best way to win the battle is to know the enemy. Predict them. Know your enemy. He's listed in here. Because he's going to come to you just like he did Jesus in Matthew 7 and say what the scripture says. And you can be like Jesus and say, no devil, it is written. You say, well, you haven't answered my question. How do I know? Come back next Sunday. I answered some questions today. Hopefully I'll answer the rest of them next Sunday. Because it's kind of like the old Walker, Texas Ranger. There's big letters up there since to be continued. But next week, we'll find out what happens when we stand strong. When we hold to. When we don't run down the preacher. When we don't run down the God. When we hold to God's unchanging hand. So I ask you this morning. Are you in Egypt? What's got you? I pick on Syria sometimes because he's got a kitty cat. Well, my cat made me stay home today. 
Why? You get up and go to work and leave that cat. The doctor said I couldn't go nowhere. Okay. But the next morning you're up and going to work. Well, I'm stepping on toes. Better yet, doctor said I can't go nowhere. My brother's going to kill me. But we get up and we go fishing at the butt crack is stupid. Huh? Bottom line is we as humans will do what we want to do when we want to do it, whether it heralds the governor or not. So why can't we put that same energy into serving a God who will take care of us above and beyond anything we can ever think or imagine? Where are you at this morning? Egypt lies. Where are you? Altars are open. Very quickly. Very quickly. I'm not going to stutter. I'm not going to hang around. Eternity will wait for nobody. When God says, go get them, you're gone. You can sit there and argue with the death angel. But when the death angel shows up and says, your life is mine, it's over. But, but, but. That's it. He's not going to sit there and argue with you. What situation have you got this morning? Quick. You need prayer. You need deliverance. You need healing. You need things. Now's the time. Now's the time. You just need somebody to agree with you in making some decisions. Now is the time. Well, I don't believe in that. Then you don't believe the word of God. James 5 says, let them call forth the elders of the church. Let them anoint with all and they that are sick shall recover. I'm not going to bother you. I'm not going to beg you. You need prayer? Come on, guys. You prayer warriors, you leadership, come on, let's do our job. It's what we're here for.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I'm not going to dismiss this morning because we need to take this with us. We need to take our doggy bags. Hold them. Don't leave them in the vehicles. Take them in with you. Put them where they belong. Enjoy them because this is something that we need to chew on for a week. Father, I thank you for your slow, mighty Lord, I ask that you just touch every soul that is here in this room today, in this building. Father, thank you. Thank you so much for your reckless love towards us, God. You love us when we don't deserve love. You loved us when we were yet sinners. And God, you knew that we were going to be wishy-washies. As Mark said, the casting prayer, you said we were going to be doors. But God, we've been a fool for the world. We've been a fool for a person. We've been a fool for Satan. But God, I ask that you make us a fool for All out, make us a fool for you, God. In Jesus' mighty name. We have a few announcements that need to be made real quickly. I forgot to get my wife to do that a couple of weeks ago. Some of you have asked about heart faith, and I'll get her to do that. But folks, I'm going to tell you, our finances are in a struggle right now. People aren't paying their tithes. You backed off again. Don't do that. You say, well, you shouldn't ask for money. You just got through talking about it. Yeah, but that guy was asking for nonsense. The Word of God says to teach the people a tenth belongs to him. Anything above the tenth is an offering. You say, well, watch it up. Anything that comes into your house is give a tenth on it. Well, I'm on set. Don't matter. God said a tenth. If it's first fruit, you bet. Right, John? Where my dirty are, my financial director. We've got things that we started. Y'all have to start. Now let's finish. Right? We want to be a church. We want to be right before God. That's what we need to do. Sweetheart, if you'll make the heart strong comp uh, announcement, I know I caught you off guard. My wife hates that more than anything in the world. But there's a lot of folks that are asking, and she knows a lot of the details that I don't know. Don't be click you on. You want the hand in. And ladies, if I was not a man, I wouldn't be married to her. But if I was not a man, Chris, I'd be going. Because it is powerful in the industry. Okay, so the heart strong faith is February 22nd from 3rd to 5th. I've already reserved hotel room um, in Dallas, 10 minutes from the church, worst case scenario. Um, and then I've already bought some tickets. I've already got a couple of other people that have called and said they wanted to come, so I'm buying more tickets tomorrow. Um, the, the original 10 that I bought are used up. So as of tomorrow, I'm buying at least five more. If there's anybody else that wants to go, please get with me because right now it's still the early bird special. Um, total cost is um, $100. It's actually like $97, $35, $25, something like that. But the additional funds will help put gas in the van. So um, if you want to do that, let me know. Also, I want to go ahead and mention, too, um, this month is Thanksgiving. I cannot believe it's already here. We do have our Thanksgiving luncheon. November 25th, um, I know that one turkey's been donated. We're going to get a couple more turkeys, and then we're going to get a sign-up sheet starting next week for anybody to bring sides, desserts, generals, whatever goes with Thanksgiving dinner. So, um, y'all be thinking about that as well. And is that it? I feel like there's something on there. So, um, leadership meeting. Yeah, I, we're going to move that to December 1st because it's usually the last Saturday of the month, but that is Thanksgiving weekend. 
So we're going to do it December 1st and also the Sunday school teachers will meet December 1st as well. So again, there's a lot going on this month with the holidays. So if you have any questions, just get with someone and we will definitely find out the answer for you. Okay, so if you have any questions, get with me and I'll either make it up as I go or I'm going to find the true answer for you. So. <laughs> She will find you an answer. She ain't gonna make nothing up. King Place is still going on. It is at three o'clock. Chris, three. Three o'clock. Don't pull another number. Robbie's good to see you this morning. Good to see y'all back with us too. Junior, good to see you, brother. I'm glad you're here. I'll call you what I want to. What? 38. Hopefully. Right. King's Place is a senior adult community. They have a country club, and that's not a country 